Hey everyone, I'm Elfals, and welcome to another match in the WCL. Last time, well, a game was certainly played. A forfeit did not technically happen, I'll say that much. But regardless, I am up to a 4-0 record for the season, one of the three undefeated teams remaining. The back half of my season does look a little tougher though, with all four remaining matches being against pretty solid players this season. My Week 5 match, for example, is against the Chillin' Chi Yu's, coached by Anivia. Anivia is a new coach to the league, and I honestly don't know anything about them other than watching the four matches they played so far, get into a very nice 3-1 record, uh, carried by a certain Mon we'll talk about in just a second. But their team is made up of Goldengo, Terra Captain Dragonite, Hisuian Samurott, Galarian Sloking, Berloom, Rotom Heat, Ribombi, Sandaconda, Terra Captain Dragonair, Gloom, and Terra Captain Cottony. Uh, so yeah, this is another coach that ran out of points towards the end of their draft. Uh, but look at those top four right there. That's a whole Gen 9 OU squad, and a very solid core at that. You have Goldengo and Hisui and Samrat, which are a pretty common draft duo for a pretty good reason. They're great at setting and keeping hazards on the field, uh, while also being offensive monsters. Meanwhile, Glowking, Rotom Heat, and Sandaconda are also going to be important defensive pieces. Particularly in this matchup, I expect the Reggie Lecky counterplay to be some combination of those three. Berloom and Rabambi have their niches as well. Okay, yeah, let's stop avoiding the issue. Terra Dragonite is currently the kill leader in the league by a significant margin, with a 14-2 KD ratio. Anivia has been mostly relying on it to set up Dragon Dance and Sweep, and the team seems to live or die by that Dragonite Sweep. In the four games they've played, Dragonite has made a clean sweep out of two of them, and in the other two matches, when the opponent successfully dealt with it, the rest of Anivia's team struggled a lot more to grab the win. But when the opportunity was right, Dragonite had an easy time cleaving through entire teams. I might actually say a little too easy. This Dragonite has been running almost the exact same set all season. Terra Normal with Dragon Dance, Extreme Speed, Earthquake, and Roost. That is a good set. It's, I think, the standard OU set, actually. But it should be quite easy to counter in the builder. Uh, that said, I can't just rely on my opponent bringing that exact set to the battle, because Terra Dragonite's power comes from its diversity. It can be Dragon Dance with Terra Flying for that powerful new stab option, mixed attacking with Draco Meteor and maybe Terra Ground Earthquake to bust through the walls, or even just Terra Normal E-Speed on a Choice Band set to immediately put me on the back foot. I need to make sure I can handle all those possibilities if I want to ensure the win. So that's going to include a couple of defensive answers, as well as some revenge killing options. And keep in mind, there are five other Pokémon on my opponent's side that I will need to beat. So uh, I have my work cut out for me this time. Let's see what I'm bringing. I'm going to start off, as usual, with Regieleki, uh, which is a standard set, pretty much. Uh, max Special Attack with Thunderbolt, Volt Switch, Rapid Spin, and Terra Blast coverage, uh, with Max Special Attack and enough speed for a plus 2 Adamant Dragonite. I'm taking an interesting route with a Terra type. Uh, we're looking at Ghost, which looks good both offensively and defensively in the matchup. Offensively, Regieleki loves being able to apply extra pressure on both Glowking and especially that Goldengo, which could otherwise attempt a spin block against me. Uh, defensively, well, you may have noticed the air balloon to grab a ground immunity. Combined with the ghost typing, Regieleki is a 100% wall to the specific Dragonite set that Anivia has been bringing all season. This is me calling my opponent out a little bit. Please, by all means, bring that same Dragonite set that's been getting you all of your success. Regieleki will switch in and click a very strong Thunderbolt. Even if it is a different Dragonite set than that, Regieleki still appreciates the immunities to both Extreme Speed as well as Berlim's Mach Punch, uh, and also a temporary immunity to the spikes and sticky webs that might be coming from my opponent's side. This isn't a traditional Terry Regieleki, it doesn't get super effective coverage into the Electric Resists, but the Electric Ghost coverage is unresisted, uh, and I'm also bringing some other means to deal with the Rotom and Sandaconda. Speaking of which, I wanted an early game Wall Breaker to force progress, so I brought Swords Dance Tinkaton to help out. Tinkaton should be able to find a decent number of setup opportunities against Glowking or Hisuian Samurott, and from there it becomes a very strong attacker. Plus 2 Gigaton Hammer hits every neutral target very hard, even one hit KOing off into Dragonite through multi scale thanks to that Mold Breaker. Play Rough is coverage mostly for the Samurott, and Bulldoze hits Goldengo and Rotom very hard after a boost. I have speed for Jolly Samurott, and the bulk allows me to survive a timid Rotom overheat from full, with leftovers to heal off any chip damage taken during setup. This is not a full sweeping set by any means, uh, but I'm, all I'm really looking for with it is to break through a couple of key pieces. A physically ro defensive Rotom can take a plus 2 Bulldoze and either hit back with Will-O-Whisper Overheat, but it spends most of its HP to do so, which 
therefore opens up Reggie Lucky. Uh, same goes for Sanaconda. A physically defensive set uh, can take a boosted Gigaton and retaliate with Earthquake, but is most likely pushed into range of my other attackers, like Reggie Lucky Terror Blast. That's the idea of the set. Force the bulky pieces to take damage for Reggie Lucky, as well as my next bring here, Dragon Dance Salamence. This is a pretty basic setup set with Dragon Dance to boost and Dragon Claw stab with Earthquake coverage off of an Adamant Nature. But on top of that, Roost, the Lumberry, and Intimidate were all decisions made to give Salamence a little more longevity in the matchup, so this becomes a decent switch into things like Samurott or Balloon. The Lumberry especially helps to set up on status mods like a Weakened Rotom, Thunder Wave Glow King, or Spore Balloon. This is mostly another breaker for the team, but at plus one it does have a shot at sweeping since it just barely outspeeds everything up through Scarf Rotom, even with the Adamant Nature. Ideally, with early game breaking from Pinkaton, Salamence can be a good win condition with one turn of setup. So next up, we're going to see the final debut of the season with Chandelure. And yes, this is my second planned Air Balloon Ghost type for the matchup, as another counter for that standard Dragonite set. This is potentially a little redundant, but it allows me to have two options to wall that specific set if it comes, so I can play a little looser with one of them if they're needed for other things. For example, Chandelure has potential as a very nice attacker in this matchup. With just modest max special attack, it tears apart threats like Glow King or Berloom with its stab moves, and nothing is really that comfortable switching into it. Will-O-Wisp cripples Hisuian Samurott as well as Dragonite, and Energy Ball smacks the Sandaconda as well as that Samurott. Uh, we have enough speed for Adamant Berloom, with the rest going into defense. Uh, this actually gives Chandelure the ability to survive a plus one Adamant Dragonite Dragon Claw from full, uh, which gives Chandelure the opportunity to hit back with either a strong attack or Will-O-Wisp. Uh, the ability of choice is Flame Body, which could hard punish Dragonite or Samurott for trying to KO me with contact move. Uh, Chandelure is probably going to be my first line of defense against Dragonite, uh, if it is that Terra Normal set, of course. Uh, we'll switch in on it and see if it is in fact walled, in which case we probably force it out. Uh, but if it does have coverage to hit me, I can still survive most plus one non-super effective moves, which gives Chandelure the opportunity to triple it with Will-O-Wisp. Next up, I need a backup Goldengo answer, uh, so I'm going to go with Farigarak in this slot. Uh, this is a weird looking set, but it's basically built to be an emergency response to a few different situations. Uh, the first, of course, is Goldengo. Uh, with max HP, an Assault Vest, and an Immunity to Shadow Ball, Frigoraph should be able to switch into it safely enough. From there, it depends on what the Goldengo does. Uh, if it tried to attack on the switch, I'll probably just start hammering away with Shadow Ball, but if it went for Nasty Plot on the switch, I am EV'd to survive a plus two modest Make It Rain, uh, and then the plan is just to hit it back with a Mirror Coat for the KO. So that's one main use, but if Goldengo is dealt with early, Furigraph is also a backup answer to Dragonite. Uh, we're heavily invested in defense, which allows Furigraph to survive even a plus two adamant Terra Flying Terra Blast from full. From there, Foul Play does massive damage back even if it's just a plus one Dragonite, and Psychic Noise is there as additional help in case Dragonite attempts to roost stall in front of me. Uh, so those were the main motivations behind Furigraph. Uh, it's a fairly specific set, uh, but it's also generally a decent special sponge for things like Rotom and Glow King, if I can afford that. The Terra type is Water for res resistance to make it rain, but I have no interest in taking the Terra option away from Rogia Lecky. And lastly, one thing to note about my opponent's team is the lack of hazard removal. Uh, I unfortunately didn't have room for a Rocker in this matchup, but I did decide to bring Spike's Ogre Pond as a dedicated Sash lead. Anivia's best leads tend to be their hazard setters, like Hisuian, Samurott, Sandaconda, and Rubambi, and uh, this Ogre Pond attempts to punish all of those. For attacks, we have Ivy Cudgel as an amazing stab move to break through Samurott and Sandaconda. Knockoff covers Goldengo and Glow King, and Rock Tomb punishes lead Rubambi and also helps uh, at least a little bit against Dragonite's setup. The goal of the set is to lead and either set up a layer of spikes or go all out offensive as early as possible, uh, whichever looks better in the moment. So that is going to do it for the team for week 5. No Greninja this time, that's a first, uh, but regardless I like how the team came together. Let's see how it all plays out in the battle. That makes a lot of sense. Top 5 plus the Electric Immunity Sandaconda. And Dragonite is of course Terra Normal, so I'm assuming it's the Dragon Dance Extreme Speed set. None of this really changes the lead matchup though, it was always going to be Ogre Pond. So good luck, have fun to Anivia. Sandaconda lead, that couldn't have gone much better. I already have the sequence planned out. I would bet money that this thing is switching out, so as the Rotom comes in, I just get up my spikes. So, amazing start for me, but Rotom is kind of hard for me to switch into. 
I think I can afford to spare a little HP on Furgraph to see what Rotom has. So as we switch in, it is just a Thunder Wave. I don't mind that too much, but the full para chance could be a problem down the line. Another problem though, I'm pretty darn sure Rotom is going for Vol Switch here, and if I stay in, I would have to guess it's out to Samurott, but I really don't have much I can do about that. I don't really have anything that's very happy taking a Volt Switch, so I can't really switch out here. But Furgraph can't really touch the switch in, so I guess I just need to go for as much chip damage as I can. Yeah, Volt Switch is going to come out. I take it pretty well, and to these Samurots, Foul Play does, eh, some damage. Not a very productive turn, but I actually don't mind the outcome. I have two mods that both love to come in and set up on Samurott. Between Take a Ton and Salamence, Salamence has a lot more physical bulk, so I'm definitely more comfortable switching into that. So we're going to come in, get that very important Intimidate, and it's actually Aqua Cutter, so probably reading the Take a Ton coming in. That works just fine for me. I get a pretty free Dragon Dance here, and that is a switch out to Boldengo, uh, which is not Balloon, which is good to know. So I outspeed Scarf Boldengo. I have Lumberry if it's physically defensive Thunder Wave, so yeah, I should just be good to Earthquake here, right? Yes, Earthquake. Oh, that's super Fizz Def, and it actually tricks a Choice Scarf onto me. Well, um, with Goldengo at 2%, there aren't any more Dragon Resists left, really, so I really don't mind this, I guess. Let's just lock in a Dragon Claw, and Goldengo's gonna go down. And you're gonna have to choose something to take a plus one Dragon Claw. That's gonna be Dragonite that comes in. Guess that makes sense, you have multi-scale to not take too much damage, uh, but this definitely isn't a setup opportunity. I mean, this is a plus one Adamant Salamence, I'm still doing a lot with Dragon Claw. So this might just be a raw Terra Normal E-Speed to Revenge, that only KOs if it's banded, so by staying in I definitely risk that, but it would be nice to find that out anyway, I suppose. I'm just gonna try to get my damage on this thing as I expect a Dragon Dance to come out, honestly. Terra Normal. E-speed, crit. Huh. Well, if it is banded, that didn't really matter, but now I still have no idea what the set is. Uh, at the very least, Chandelure with Balloon should cover either band or the standard two attack set, so I feel pretty safe to, to Willow at this turn. Dragonite does switch out, implying one of those two sets, and it's into Samurott. That is an amazing burn, and now that it is burned, I feel pretty good about bringing in my other setup sweeper. Tinkaton comes in on the Ceaseless Edge, and yeah, freest Swords Dance ever. Of course, Samurott is going to be threatened out here, so it's going to switch out to the Rotom. This is exactly what I was looking for. Plus two, let's get going with the Bulldoze, not a KO, and I am going to get T-Wave for my trouble. Uh, so that's a pretty physically defensive Rotom, but this is still all good with me. The main goal with Tinkaton was to chip this down so Reggie Lucky can deal with it in the endgame. Just in case it tries to stay in and pain split, I will just have to bulldoze again. I actually didn't realize this, but I do outspeed and I KO the Rotom. That is one Reggie Lucky check taken care of. And it's the Sandaconda as the revenge. Yes, please, bring in all of your electric resistance for me to break through. Let me Gigaton this thing. Instead of Earthquake, they're just going to get their rocks up and BAM! Gigaton. That is uh, another physically defensive spread though, jeez. But since it didn't go for Earthquake on that turn, I can actually just pick this up with a Play Rough for the KO. Yeah, I definitely live this Earthquake and full Para. Yeah, I guess I was due for that. That's fine. Take it out, it's pretty much done its job already, so I feel just fine sacking it to the next Earthquake. It's fine. Glare, though, it's kind of an interesting read, uh, and I get pull, full para again. Then, of course, uh, with that turn, my opponent's going to see I'm not playing any more games with this. Uh, there's the Earthquake to bring the game to 4-4. Four, four. I actually have a couple of different options to revenge here. Sandicon's pretty low health, but Chandelure feels like the best. Uh, there are really no switch-ins here, so this is going to be a sack of some kind, probably. Samurott's going to come in as I just went for Energy Ball to pick off the Sandiconda. And honestly, Chandelure is po poised to do a lot more. Glowkin comes in presumably to break the Balloon for Dragonite, but I have another Air Balloon Ghost type in the back, so I'm more than happy to just Shadow Ball. It's gonna go in for amazing damage on the Glow King, and that's just a Future Sight that comes off. I wonder if that's the best thing it has it hit me with. And because of the opportunity to get Regenerator health back, I think there's just about zero chance that Slow King stays in here. So with the switch out to Dragonite, 
easiest will o -Wisp read of my life. That thing's burned. So at this point, the game has been going pretty well for me. Feels more or less wrapped up with the burn on the Dragonite, but it's actually here when I, I wanted to take the opportunity to critique my gameplay a little bit. So let's just see the next couple of turns. Dragonite is going to try to boost up with Dragon Dance, and I just stay in Flamethrower. Then of course, I'm going to get hit by that Future Sight, and that does open me up to get picked off by the Earthquake on the next turn. This is confirming that it's probably just the Dragon Dance Extreme Speed Earthquake Roost set. That is fine by me. I have another Air Balloon Ghost type. Regieleki can come in, and with the Terra into Ghost, we immune the Extreme Speed, of course, and that is an easy revenge 3-2 game. Then the Glow King is going to come in, and Terra Blast is going to go and does 40%. And then the Glow King recovers, and I realized that I just sacked my best way to break through this thing. In hindsight, when Chandelure was sitting in front of Dragonite, I probably should have just went to Furgraph to tank the Future Sight and hit a couple of foul plays. Then next time Chandelure comes in, it pretty much just sweeps through the rest of the team because we basically established that Dragonite can't touch it, and Slow King and Sandaconda are both in range at this point. But now my options to beat this Slow King are Regilecki which, as we just saw, can't out-damage Slack off, Ogre Pond, which is weak to Sludge Bomb, and Furgraph, which has a pretty weird set, and it's also paralyzed. So, I'm pretty sure I still have the game here, I'm still pretty confident in the win. But, by sacking Chandelure, I did make things significantly more complicated. I may have given my opponent at least the opportunity to bring things back. The first thing I am going to do, now that I find myself in this situation, is rapid spin the hazards away, mostly to ensure that Ogre Pond can keep its sash for later. And Glowking is actually going to chilly out to Sandaconda, presumably getting that uh, regenerator health back. I would have honestly just swapped to Sandaconda directly if I were them, because this is going to go down to the next Terror Blast anyway, and you would have saved health on Glowking, but since I rapid spin, I suppose it doesn't make a difference. So with Glow King coming back onto the field, it is at 82%. Sand is up, but it has the Black Sludge still, so buckle in guys, we might have to stall out Slack off here. Or I could just crit, and then the Glow King's gonna hit Sludge Bomb. It does poison, but that's not a huge deal. And then with all the chip damage, it's very much in range of the next Terror Blast. That one's gonna wrap it up. 3-0 game. Well, all right. <laughs> With post-game knowledge, actually, it turns out that Terra Blast was a roll slightly in my favor to KO there without the crit, so I guess Reggie Lecky could have had it in the bag regardless. I was probably a little overly concerned about that end game, But yeah, GG to Anivia. It was a fun one. I feel like my game plan came together pretty well, uh, like every offensive piece did what it needed to for Reggie Lecky to basically just clean in the end. And while I'm not the first coach in this season to neutralize Dragonite successfully, I feel like I found the funniest way to do it with two air, air balloon ghosts. I wonder if Anivia will be changing up the set a little more after this. If anything, I feel like this match highlights that I should be a little more careful about what mons I sack. Chandler was definitely very valuable there, so no reason to sack it like that, right? So I'll definitely keep that in mind moving forward. But yeah, with that, I get up to a 5-0 record for the season. We definitely take those. We only have three weeks left until playoffs, so from here it's all about just securing a good spot. Next week is up against Joe 8 and the Akron Agrons, definitely another team I've matched into plenty of times. So if you've made it this far in the video, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.